Okay, in today's video we are talking about the, uh, the Python DateTime library and we're going to focus on string formatting. So to get started we're going to do our import, import DateTime as DT. Again, you can drop the DT if you want. It's just a convention to make typing a little bit easier. And let's get into it. So uh, string formatting, date formatting, whatever we want to call it, there's, there's two things that two scenarios that might happen when you're working with dates. One is that you've created a date time object and you want to uh, take that date time object and print it or send it or display it in a manner that's a bit more human readable. So for example, you don't want a date time uh, to send a date that looks like uh, oops, looks like that. Oh, I forgot to execute on the D. There we go. This is a functional date time object, but it, it's not really a way that we're used to conveying date information. So there's one case where you want to make date information look a little bit more typical. Uh, another case is going to be the other way around. It's when you get information that's typical and uh, you get something maybe a little bit more like, uh, I'm going to cheat and uh, go right here. You get something that looks a little bit more like this and you need to convert it to a date time object so that you can do Python manipulations with it. So we'll we'll get started and we're going to start with the uh, the uh, date time to string uh, examples and there's there's two ways to take a date time object and convert it to a string. One is the ISO format. Uh, I, some people might call it the ISO format. ISO is uh, stands for Industrial Standards Organization. So this is a convenience tool from Python to conform a, a Python date time object to the ISO's date time standards. Uh, I, I don't think I'll go into too much on that. You can Google them if you want. International Standards Organization is what ISO stands for. And uh, this is the, uh, the date time formatting that, uh, that they require for their, uh, uh, for their uh, manuals. And then so ISO format allows two two main uh, approaches. One is the date time which you see there and then we can take a uh, a date object. Oh, oops, I had a if I'm going to make it a date object. I can only include the date information which is year, month and day. And there you go. So there would be ISO format on a date object. It's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot you have to do there. The next uh, string or uh, Python uh, date time to string method. The one that's uh, more common is the strf time. I think it stands for string format time. And the way that works is it allows you to take a Python date time object and really get specific about how exactly you want to convey that. And so you can see I've given a, an example here, but uh, let me let me show you how I'm doing this. The, the easiest way to understand this is to come to the Python date time documentation. You can Google uh, Python date time and it's usually the first hit. And then you're in the documentation and I'm going to come here to section 8.1.8 .8, and uh, you have a key here. So the way that string format time works is it works with an string interpolation. So we get the, uh, if you're familiar with some of the uh, the more traditional Python uh, string interpolation methods, the percent method. Uh, you would just take a percent sign and then follow it with some value and that value populates a, a formatted uh, value into a string and that's what we're doing here. So if I wanted to take this uh, Python date object and I'm, I'm actually going to make it a date time object. So we're going to get, I'm, I want to make it 530. I think that's what I had when we started. So hour 17 and minute 30, and I have to make it a date time object now. Um, we have a date time object, and if I wanted to convert that to something a little bit more interesting, I follow this command. I go uh, d because we have the date time object saved as a variable d, and then dot strf time, and to just show you what we can do, you, we, let's just start with the day. So. By typing that command in, we, we simply take that date time object and get only the day back. Uh, regardless of how much value, uh, much information is there, we said, I just want the day. And you can even do kind of cool things with it if you wanted to know. So 
the year 1500, January 1st, uh, was a Monday, if you, if you wanted to know that. We'll go back to where we were. So the, uh, the command for the, uh, the month is percent %B, and then the command for the day is percent %D. And only the value immediately preceding the percentage sign is following string interpolation. Everything else in between our, uh, our parentheses here, uh, or not our parentheses, our, uh, our quotes, is, uh, is just a standard string object. So this comma will show as just a, a string, a comma string. And then we're going to say if we want the year, so we want percent capital Y. And again, that, if you're wondering, well, how did I get that information? How did I find out when to do percent, percent Y or percent B? It's all right here in the Python documentation. And in doing that, I get this, this output. I get Tuesday, January 1st, 2019, and then I can take it even further. I can say, okay, I want uh, the hour, so percent H, colon, and then percent uh, M for the minute and then percent %p, which will tell us whether it's p.m., a.m., or p.m. And percent %h puts us on a 24-hour clock, so if we wanted to be on a 12-hour on a clock, we would do something like that, or we would use per, uh, percent %i. So that would be kind of a more elaborate version of, of the, uh, the string, something that you'll see quite often if someone wants to do something like this. Um, where we'll just uh, we'll, we'll use a standard uh, numeric date with slashes. So we'll, we'll go percent, uh, um, let me just double check here. I think it's lowercase m it is, is for the month, and then percent d slash uh, for the day, and then percent y for the year. And then you get a date object like that. And we can obviously change this slash to anything we want. And there you go. So that's how to take a Python datetime object and convert it to a string, uh, a human readable string. The only other thing I want to I want to point out about this is that when you do this, whether we're uh, using the uh, the strf method or whether we're using ISO format, when you take a Python object and convert it using strf time or ISO format, you're literally converting the Python object to a string. And so that, that becomes sort of the business discussion here is, is that it's cool that you can do this, uh, but the use case for me personally on using ISO format or strf time has been a bit limited, and that's because usually uh, with Python, I'm not doing final processing on, in Python. I'm usually taking information that I get somewhere, processing it, doing some, some code to it, doing you know calculations, manipulations, whatever. And then I'm using Python to send that information to a database, or I'm sending it to a CSV document or to an Excel document. And as a general rule, you don't want to uh, do any kind of formatting until about the last step of most, uh, of most data processes. And that's because if I send it to an Excel sheet, and I send a string, then whoever gets that Excel sheet back uh, is going to either have to convert it to a date or they won't be able to use it because they won't be able to do any Excel calculations with it. Or if I send it to a database as a string, then the database is going to record it as a string. And so I either need to process it in the database, which I don't like to do, or uh, uh, I, I've sent it the database just static information that can't be manipulated as a date-time object from whatever system ends up extracting that data from the database. So as a general rule, STRF time is cool, it's, it's interesting, but it's limited. Where I might be using it is if I'm generating reports, particularly PDF reports, um, and I'm doing that in Python using Report Lab. You can Google that. Um, I, may I may want to use the uh, string format time for something like that, but my use case has been pretty limited. What hasn't been limited is, okay, we've talked about how to take a date time object and convert it to a string, is I'm very often uh, getting date time in, or getting date information in the form of a string. So someone's sending me a CSV file or a text file uh, that has string date information, or I'm doing some kind of web scraping or PDF scraping or, or you know, getting, I, I'm doing something to extract data maybe from reports that weren't intended for me to be doing that 
and uh, therefore I have to get that string information, I have to convert that to a date. So that's much more common and to do that we use the method strp time. I think it stands for string python time. So I'll uh, create an example here. I'm going to uh, comment these, uh, these items out and uh, um, I've created a date string for July 15th uh, 1990 and just to prove it to you it's a string. So with strp time, the command is to take, uh, just to call a date time object. So we go dt.datetime dot strp time, and then dot strp time takes two arguments. The first argument it takes is the date string, and then the second argument it takes is the, uh, um, is the, uh, uh, the way the date string is formatted following that same strf time format. So if I do that, now I get a, uh, a Python object back. Now what if I had gotten the, uh, the date string like this? What if I had gotten 07, uh, I can't remember, I think it was uh, July 15th, 1990. What if I get that? Now as you notice it breaks. And the reason it breaks is because this, uh, this uh, formatting here no longer works. So I have to convert uh, this formatting to match this formatting. So what we'll do there is kind of what we did in this example up here. We're going to go percent %m because it starts with the month and then we'll bring in the percent %d and then the backslash there with the percent %y and now you'll notice it works. So what you're doing is taking the uh, the uh, the date string that you're getting and you're you're telling Python how it's formatted so you feed it the value, tell it how it's formatted, and then Python can give you this value back. And then if you wanted it to be a date only object, you can run that. You can just dot date. So that's the uh, high level overview of string formatting in Python, and we'll catch you in the next video.